Uh, good afternoon, good evening, everyone here. My name is Kirat Damani, as I was well introduced, much better than I deserve, but uh, I'm a 39-year-old practicing lawyer at present. I practice in the field of property law and commercial corporate transactions. Uh, I've been doing this for actively for last eight years. Before that, I was working in, in Mumbai with a law firm, doing my internship and solicitor's articleship uh, for three years between 2007 and 10. Till 2007, I was a professional cricketer. I used to play for Ranji Trophy, uh, the Gujarat Ranji Trophy. I played the Uda Trophy. I played Dilip Trophy for West Zone. I played everything else but the Indian team. I just finished uh, playing cricket the year before uh, the IPL was introduced. And uh, guess what? I could have still played. Uh, and I could have felt that I failed. I could have played one more year and I would have now been an IPL player. But that's not the mindset I have. I'll go back in time. I was, uh, when, I, when I grew up as a kid, I was an extremely subdued, uh, very intimidatable, uh, very introvert, a very non-expressive kid. I used to grasp a lot of things, but I wouldn't be able to express uh, what was in me. You know, I was uh, brought up in a, in a very modest household. Uh, my father uh, you know, worked really hard uh, to become a very successful lawyer today, but when I was born, it wasn't the case. A very strong-headed father, a very hard-working father, very passionate father. All that I saw, and I was always, uh, you know, kind of intimidated of how that happens. Every time he used to come back home, I would run around and go back somewhere in the room and hide, uh, just because if he had asked me what I did that day and whether did I do it well, I was just, uh, you know, fearful of being told away. That stayed with me for a while, and then something great happened to me by my mother, who exposed me to something called cricket. When I was in grade three, I was I used to play cricket a lot at home, just bang on the ball on the wall and keep hitting the ball all day long. And with the sound of it, she got really irritated. You just get the hell out of here. Go to a cricket field rather than do what you want to do there. So she asked the neighbor to take me there, and that's where my journey started at the age of eight, uh, when I first went to the cricket field. And that's where I found my solace. I started expressing myself in actions. The ball was thrown high in the air, and I would catch from wherever I could grab it. I was so, so stylish, as my coaches said, and then I started feeling that I was worth. My presence and my identity was really worth to the world. Till then, I was very unsure of whether will I do really well. The fear of uh, you know, being rejected, as we had heard earlier, of fear of being failure is probably much more bigger than actually when you're in the pond. And that went on. I went on to play cricket. I practiced really hard. I was able to express myself a lot on the field. And then came the real world when I was now playing inter-school cricket for, the, for, my, for my school. And then I got selected to play for Gujarat State in under-16 uh, when I was uh, 14 and a half. And I, I first represented Gujarat against Maharashtra. And when I go out, I see such big cricketers. I was very slight and small then, and I just felt really intimidated. I felt that whether will I really be able to now perform when I go out in the ground. And that kind of fear you know, kept me away for a year from performing well. Then it progressed on to under-19s, and then I went on to play the Ranji Trophy. I kept playing really good cricket, and I realized that it was all about my mindset. It was all about what I feared of, and not really what was the fact. Sometimes we kind of perceive so many things in our heads, and we create a mountain of some, some tremendous pressure that we don't really deserve to. We create our own definitions of expectations. I mean, what is failure, by the way? Failure is just not achieving what you expected. It's as simple as that. And the question is that do we really achieve every day something that we expect? I don't think so. Do we really do or end up doing something that we really wanted to do every day? No. So why should this be different? I went on to captain the Gujarat Ranji Trophy, and then I had to handle the entire state team I had to sit with uh, probably the best coaches. I used to go out for tosses with uh, people like Harbhajans and Sevaks. Now I was in the real world. And I started feeling that all my fears that I had while hitting the ball on the ground when I was batting or I was captaining, I think it just meant nothing. It is all about in the matter of time when you're out there and how you do, it's, it's just about that. All we need to just understand is that how you prepare yourself for that. You know, how you really, really look at things. I mean, for that matter, you know, we, we take certain events in our lives or certain landmarks in our lives to define our success and failure. I mean, I have now realized after all this that the entire life is probably a stepping stone. 
entire life revolves around something that we have as an opportunity and we cannot confine ourselves just by merely defining a certain things to be tagged us as a failure it is very very undeserving to our own selves when we are out there and giving it all the cricket really went well i started playing english county cricket then and when i first went there it's a different a different kettle altogether when you play in english conditions uh, the ball stops the ball swings a bit uh, in india if you understand cricket it comes flat you just get your uh, leg out and hit anywhere you want but now the ball was stopping the ball was wobbling early may june the the wickets in may and june are different than wickets in july and august and september because then the sun comes hard and the wickets get flatter like india but the first couple of months you know i played 8 years of english county uh, cricket as a professional in the sussex and hampshire and all and the first two months when i first went up i was struggling to hit the ball now at that point in time i could have just said that i probably can't do it because i couldn't even understand what my captain was telling me i was the only one who was allowed to be a non resident english cricketer per team and i was the only one from india the remaining 10 were from from england their accent was un, un understandable i couldn't uh, understand what the hell they were saying when they were asking me some asking something uh, for from me to do and it was really becoming difficult but then i all my focus went on why the hell am i really missing the ball and instead of feeling that this is a failure I decided to make sure my coach told me I called my coach back my dad back and they just said this figure out where you're doing wrong and just practice it it's not a failure it's just probably a challenge that you need to adapt the adapting in life is extremely important and when you are transiting from one phase to another there is no other way but to adapt and how do you adapt is purely prepare yourself yeah i went into the nets i decided to practice bat for hours and hours and hours and in a month and a half time i was then hitting centuries at will because it was not my ability at that point in time which was stopping me only it was my attitude that probably made me fearful even before going out to bat i was already out in the dressing room i already felt that this ball is moving a bit too much today and i think i'm going to make a mistake and when you think like that you attract that on the contrary i changed the entire mindset and i started thinking that i'm going to instead of thinking that i'm going to play a bad shot and the ball is going to nick and go to the slips and i'm going to get out i started telling myself on the auto command that i'm not going to go for it i'm going to leave it i started doing it along with the practice and automatically all my energies were now positive and i just started feeling that this is as simple as batting in india it's only about how i thought about it it was not my inability but it was purely about how i thought about it that went on and on and i was captaining the gujarat ranji trophy i was playing the devudhi trophy i was playing extremely well in the sussex county uh, it was an age of 29 where i happened to meet a couple of lawyers and they offered me some position uh, because i come from a law family they offered me some position in mumbai to intern at the, one of the best law firms and somehow i decided to move on i said i'll come for the summer and not go to england i went to mumbai for four months of the summer to do my solicitor's article ship and then i decided to stay back and never play cricket my only dream i grew up with you know i made uh, tendulkar made his debut in 1989 when i was 11 and that's where i was really completely fascinated in 1992 when he played his first world cup i was 14 and i was just getting there when he played his second world cup in 96 i was 18 and all i wanted to do in life was just to play for india nothing else i lived my life on that i slept slept with my bat i would have had sleepless nights i was nervous i was passionate i was working hard all i wanted to do in my life was just to play for india and which i almost did i almost did that but at this point in time i decided to move on because the yuvrajis and the harbhajans and the uh, you know kfs and uh, you know the sevags and the gambhirs they all started coming in the youngsters were promoted and all of a sudden i felt that i do not want to treat myself as a failure only because i did not play for india because for me now success was only defined as whether i gave my best i did not want anyone else to determine whether i was successful or a failure i just decided that i gave all my best so far and i always wanted to be a lawyer when i finished my cricket because i my father was a lawyer and i always saw him and i was fascinated there came the point of stability i just felt that if i was stable i would have achieved what i wanted and i defined my stability then out of all my experiences was stability is nothing else but something incepting from clarity 
you know, if you are clear of what you want in life, I think the stability automatically follows. Step instability is always about whether are you really clear about what you want in life. If you know what you want, all your energies, all your attitude, everything is going to work and align to allow you achieve that. And now I thought it's time to move on, and I was clear enough that I can now shift and live without cricket, live with the great memories that I had, and take it to the legal field and make it even bigger over there. I shifted to Mumbai for three and a half, four years. Came back in 2010. Started my own practice in 2011. I'm now doing probably transactions worth a thousand or 1,500 crores a year for all the multinationals, for nationals, for local clients, all real estate and commercial transactions, and everything that I had learned on the sports field of how to handle myself and how to handle the situations are exceedingly helping me on the legal field now. And I've never thought about those failures that I thought of. Yeah, what I've realized is that when we feel that something that we wanted did not happen the way we perceived it, probably how do we deal with it? So number one, that whether failure is big enough or the fear of failure is big enough, because it's not always your skill and ability that will solve issues for you. I believe it's your attitude, attitude in form of your preparation, attitude in form of your hunger, attitude in form of how. How uh, you know positively are you able to take uh, certain things in life? You know, are you gonna give it much more than it deserves? Nothing in life deserves more importance, you know, than it actually deserves to be irrelevant to what it is. And then when you do it the rightful way, I think it comes along really beautifully. When you face something where you feel that things have not gone the way it should have been, then I think intelligence is always in simplicity. A simple approach is always going to last you long, very sustainable, very adaptable, and very doable. And end of the day, it is that simple approach naturally improvises of what you should have done. If you try too hard to improvise, if you try too hard when you think things haven't gone the way you wi wished, it's only going to make it worse. I'll give you a very beautiful example. I made my debut in Ranji Trophy cricket in 1998, and my first season I played a game at One Khede against uh, Mumbai. Tendulkar was on his peak. He had just scored a couple of beautiful hundreds in Sharjah against Australia, and we won that tournament. Got to see him. He was probably the biggest player in the world in the in the mid 90s. He was going to play that match, and after in a four-day match, after the game got over, I mean, sur not surprisingly, we were bowled out in three days, and the match got over, and we were we lost badly to Mumbai. Our coach went to Tendulkar and said that our boys wanted to speak with you, and I went to Tendulkar and said, sir. I've been watching you. You've been only practicing forward defence. You're asking a 14-year-old boy to keep throwing those underarms, and you are just playing the forward defence. I mean, a, a legend like you who has already scored like so many centuries, the best player in the world, and you are still doing the most simple thing, which my coach taught me when I was 12. He just put his shoulder on my hand, uh, uh, head on my shoulder, hand on my shoulder, and just said, "Kirat, improvisation will automatically come on the ground as and when needed." Improvisation will not come if my alignment of my mind, my body, and my coordination with hand and body is not in place. All I want to see is that whether my head and my my weight transfers all right, whether I'm shifting it all right, and whether am I just aligning with the entire coordination of mind and body. Everything else will happen naturally as and when the baller throws the ball. And that was so beautifully said for someone who ended up scoring 100 centuries and also did not probably sleep as well even after scoring 90 hundreds in international cricket. You know, all I've learned through the years is just keep it simple for your for, for yourself. Another thing is try and be extremely grateful of what you have. There are so many people in this world who probably are nowhere near what you already have, and the feeling of gratitude and gratefulness of what you already have. Is going to take a lot of unhappiness away. It's all about being happy. End of the day, you know, success necessarily does not, does not bring happiness. Happiness is, you know, lying every, in every little thing that we do. Eventually, if you term something as a failure or a success, you will realize at some point in time. I realize it now. I probably didn't realize when I was your age, but now I realize, having done so much at 39, that I'm probably very grateful of what I did. I'm grateful I did not play for India, but I at least played the sport. I played the sport that has taught me so much, and has so much character built up on me. My attitude has been so phenomenal that today you put me anywhere and I will not feel uncomfortable. Not because I probably know everything. I don't. 
I rather believe in specialization. Don't try to do too much. Try to do one thing extremely well. When you try to clutter around, when you try to do too much, uh, you know, you would not be able to focus on one thing which you wanted to achieve so much. Yeah, and therefore, and I would say that, be extremely grateful of what you have. Be extremely simple in your approach. Don't try to improvise too much. You know, failure is just probably, you know, uh, a state of mind. It is not actually a certificate. I mean, who cares what, I mean, when, when you score a hundred, people are going to come to you. And when you score a zero and when you lose two tournaments, the same people are going to come and abuse you and curse you to death. The people's memory is extremely short. It's all about you, how you feel about yourself. And therefore, it's extremely important that you keep your subconscious and your conscious in alignment. Whether your subconscious really believe that you're capable of being successful, because the subconscious is an irrational mind, whatever the conscious mind puts on the sub uh, subconscious, that's how it functions. So one must feel in subconscious that you're capable, not just capable, but you're entitled. Why, why, why aren't you? You are entitled to be successful, and once you are successful, try to withhold it by your attitude. Try to use your success and your power so well, being so grateful by imparting it, you know, uh, as much as you can, and you'll not realize how much it will come to you further. You know, it's, it's a beautiful phenomenon, and failure is just a state of mind, that's what I've realized. There's a larger thing in, in, in this universe where you attract what you think. There's something of failure you should not even think of. Try and give your best, and in the, especially in the modern world, unlike 30 years back, 40 years back, there were not many opportunities. If you see very practically, even today, there are so many things that you could do in specializing, which were not available probably 20, 30 years back, unlike this internet and the IT era. And therefore, there is no reason why you guys should be worried about probably be failure or anything like that. Just enjoy your journey, try and figure out what you are probably aligned to do with, and that is going to take you to places. Yeah. With that, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure having spoken here, and I wish you all the, all the success in the future. Thank you so much.